views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome to Conscious Creation with actress, author, and healer, Dee Wallace. If you want to take charge of your life, really take charge of your life, the next hour will be a fun, enlightening experience in creating the life you want. Whether it's money, health, success, or relationships, join Dee in celebrating the power of you and see your life expand into joyful creation. To join Dee now, call 319 527-6305. And don't forget, D can also be heard on BBS Radio, iTunes, the Empowerment Channel at the Connect Me Radio Network. You can also hear D on Get Inspired Media Network, Transformation Talk Radio, UBN, Universal Broadcasting Network, plus News for the Soul Broadcasting. And now, here's D. Hello, all you amazing, fabulous, incredible, magnificent, so very loved. And darn sexy people. I am coming to you today from Reno, Nevada, here for a sci-fi convention. And I've got four totally non-related things from the channel to bring to you. First of all, I want to add to that lovely announcement that we are now on iHeartRadio. So you can find me and... uh, Suggest that to all your friends, iHeartRadio. I'm really excited about that. And uh, thanks to UBN for helping me create that. Uh, First of all, they, uh, and this was actually came out of the webinar that we did um, on weight loss and weight creation. Uh, And then it extended into the private session that uh, I've been doing, and they want you to know that any time you are fighting yourself in joy and love, any time you're not choosing joy or love, any time you're saying, well, screw this, you know, I know it's going to be better for me, but I am just want to stay stuck here, you are creating health issues. That's the beginning of the creation of all, they're saying, health issues in our world. So, obviously, stress, going back to stress, if you love yourself in the highest way, you're not going to allow yourself to move into a stressful place because you know that's not an, a testament to the love of yourself when you let yourself do that, or eat the wrong food, or hold fear, or hold grudges and judgment, or cling to your old stories, right, that keep you out of experiencing the love and joy that's possible for you in this moment right now. Um, And they gave, through this private session, a beautiful positive claim for this, I can access full, unequivocal love for myself. Because most people, that's the excuse they use is, well, I don't know how or I just can't. I can't do it, Dee. I can't do it. Well, you can do it. And this is the claim. I can access full, unequivocal, joyful love for myself. So everybody just stop for a moment and say that. You'll feel it. Go into your heart. Open your heart. Go to your love place. I can access full, unequivocal, and joyful love for myself. And so it is. Okay. Uh, the next thing, and I urge you to read the, the e-blast that will be coming out tomorrow because I delve into this in a a much greater way. But around all of these 
and hurricanes and tornadoes. Oh my. Um, they're saying our dimensions of the universe are coming together, crossing over and merging, but they're, they're kind of having to collide to do that. And in the final analysis, it's a really good thing because it's opening the chakras of the universe. Now, what are chakras? They're energy centers. And what do we feel? Certainly, with all these weather, pa weather patterns, are a lot of energy, tons of energy, sometimes feeling like uncontrollable energy. Um, but they, they want you to know that there is an order to this chaos and to hold the balance. The next thing is they would like to invite all of us to give up this need to or belief in that we need to be redeemed for not being perfect. There is no perfect. There's yin and yang in everything. There's positive and negative in everything. There's the balance of everything. Everything is God. Everything is creation. And so are you. So if you pick your nose, it doesn't matter. You're still a big part of God. If you weigh 20 pounds too much, still a part of God. You know, quit holding on to that old religious teaching and insistence, they're saying, that we need to be redeemed. We need redemption because we're not perfect, because we bit an apple one time in a story. Okay? We have to come forward to accept and love ourselves as we are right now. And so we claim that, the symbol of formula, the violet flame, and the golden light around all of that. Now, there was something else. Where did it go? Where did it go? Oh, it's core belief number 20 they want me to talk about. When I value myself, so when we value ourselves, there is a belief that we have to also abandon ourselves in some way. Or if we value ourselves, other people have to abandon us in some way. And now, how does that play out, right? Well, you know a lot of people... Probably some of this applies to all of us also. You, you, you know a lot of people in, in your circles where you come forward for yourself financially and then there's either the fear or the reality that relationships fall away because you've come forward for yourself financially and it can this can happen in any di myriad of different subjects so I can take care of my body I can become the weight I want I can value myself in the way I want to do by eating that way and but I'm um, made fun of by the people in my family for doing this so I'm valuing myself, but I'm also giving up a part of myself or a part of what's important to me in my acceptance from other people. So I want you to look and be aware of that core belief that are you, do you have a belief system going that if you come forward for yourself, other people will move into lack? Do you have a belief system that if you take care of yourself, other people are going to be jealous? If you make it, people will judge you. These are all examples of 
when I value myself to abandon myself. Those are some real core beliefs there. Most of you know by now, if you get my email, that I have a $100 half-hour special going on right now. If you don't get the emails and have signed up for the e-blast, then that's why, because that's the only place it went out. Um, there's just a very, very few spots left. If you want to check it out, it's just for October only. Right. And our next webinar will be October 18th from 7 to 9 on fear, all kinds of fear, real and imaginary, what fear is, if there's things in this world we really should and need to be afraid of, and the channel says there definitely are. So this all came about, uh, the subject of fear and wanting to do this on the last webinar. The, the, every All of you that were on the last webinar brought that in to uh, go on to do the next one on fear. And uh, it's so prevalent right now with North Korea and everything else. I think it's a darn good subject. Now, I want to say um, my computer is running really slowly today with the Internet in this hotel. So we're going to start off on the calls and see how they go. And Stephen's going to pop in if I need him to. So bear with me right now. We're going to go to Jay in Canada. And hopefully you're on. Jay, are you on? Yes, I am. Thanks for taking my call. Oh. It's great to talk to you again. Yeah, you too, honey. What's up? Hey, just wondered, you know, I was at a workshop about a couple of weeks ago when you prepared for it. I was doing a cleanse at that time that finished right on the new, oh, it's at the uh, full moon. And I just wondered. I actually went to a sweat lodge, too. And finally came to realize that uh, the work that I've been doing with the yoga thing is that I showed up. And uh, after I when I went back to see my teacher during that, that uh, Saturday, it's a very long day, I, uh, I said, I really respect your teaching. So... I just felt that there's probably more that came up with it. I just wonder what the channel has to say about that. Okay, can you say that in one sentence? What I want to know is. Yeah, what I want to know is uh, what is the channel saying regarding to my experience on that weekend where I had a, a kind of like a breakthrough that happened, a clearing. Okay. And the, the channel Thank is you. lovingly the channel is lovingly saying back to you, why do you need confirmation about what you already know? Oh, I just wonder because sometimes I miss stuff. <laughs> well, but that's they want us to really move into knowing and owning that we are our highest answers. Jay, you know you had a breakthrough, and the channel is seconding that, is affirming that. You know you've expanded, and the channel is affirming that. When I say you know still you're your highest answer, it goes to no, and the channel is affirming that. Okay. So when is Jay going to know, when are we all going to know that we're the highest answer? When are we going to go to ourselves to trust ourselves first? Why is it that we believe, and this is when I value myself, I abandon myself. This is a good representation of that. When are we going to know that when we go into our heart and ask the right question, we always hear the right answer. What is it going to take for you to know that, Jay? It's going to be a moment of stillness where I should come to realize that I don't need the answers anymore. They're, they're all within myself, and i got to take that time of stillness to, 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 to indicate that. Yes, but what must be present in that time of stillness? Uh, it's going to be awareness of my inner truth. Trust, baby. You have to move into total trust. 
And it's a circle, guys, because you move into trust because you know you know, and you know you know because you're such in the place of trust within yourself. You are hearing God, the guides, the angels, the universe, the force, speak to you, through you, and that's your I am present. But if you have a belief system that's saying, that's me telling me, and me isn't connected to it, and therefore I can't trust the me, I can only trust the it, then you can't trust the it either, because the it's you and talking is you. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay. So that's the answer. It was a great question, because it led to really your final opening. And also the channel would lovingly like to say to you, you don't have to try so hard, Jay. You're already there, and we're all already there, but unless we acknowledge that we're already there, we're not there. Okay? You got it? I got it. So let's all come together and acknowledge that I choose to accept that I'm already there. I choose to accept that my voice is the voice that... I always hear the highest guidance and information because that's my direction to myself. And if I'm directing myself, I'm directing the one energy, which always responds to my direction. And so it is. Great start to the show. Thank you. Always great to hear from you, Jay. You always bring in the big ones. <laughs> I do. <laughs> right. Love you. Much love. <laughs> love you, too. Oh, my goodness. That was awesome. All right. We are. See, I can't tell if he's off yet, but we're going to go to Emily in California. Hi, honey. Hi, Dee. Oh, great show. <laughs> yeah, great um, start, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So I am continuing to create my freedom. We'll be moved out of this house by the end of the week. I'm just sitting right. here on the back deck looking out at this incredible view we've had for the last four years of the water and the hills. And it's, um, we've loved being here and it's an ending. And I just, I feel that like, okay, I'm allowing for endings. I'm allowing for endings okay, and what moving into trust. Emily, what happens with every ending? New beginnings. Okay. So, you know, there are, this is interesting. They're asking me to tell you to look out at that view and claim for yourself, I, re I will remember this always, and therefore, I am always here. Beautiful. I feel it. Yeah. Yep. I, I do yeah. that every time I sit on my balcony in Hawaii. I, I love it there so much, and I look out and I go, yes. I will remember this. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, so are you excited about your new beginning? I'm so excited. I'm so overjoyed. I just, I feel like I'm dancing in my heart all day, every day. <laughs> Great. And, and, you know, little bumps along the road and all that. And I just am curious, is there anything related to fear that I can, you know, move into more joy by addressing? Not at all. There's nothing. Okay. See, awesome. guys, there's, there's bumps in the road. We're on a physical plane. You know, we run into other people's BS all the time on the physical <laughs> plane. The point is, and the challenge is, and the gift is, what do you do with it when you run into it? Yeah. What do you do with it? How do you handle it? And so... Um, they're saying just be very cognizant that if you feel a bump or you feel like you've run into the bump, uh, that you're the creator of you and you go, oh, I see a bump. Well, I acknowledge that bump and I'm claiming smoothness and balance and just flow in my life. 
and feel into that and the bump goes away and you handle it easily and you move on. It's when yeah. you go, oh my God, there's a bump. There's a bump. I hate this bump. How big is the bump? I don't know if I can get around the bump. Why am I always running into the bumps? And then you're screwed. Yeah. You know, I, I started going there last night because I was so tired uh, after doing the show and hadn't slept well the night before. And I really, really had to to pull myself back and go, are, are you going to do that? Or are you just going to go to the room and hang out and relax and do what you need to do? So, you know, Lanny and I just came back and we cuddled and we watched a little TV and that's what I needed. I got my balance back instead of going out and, you know, meeting people and doing stuff and all that that I really kind of wanted to do. But I just wasn't in an energetic place to do it. So do you love yourself and value yourself enough to come through for yourself when those bumps happen? That's all it yes. is, Emily. Okay? Yes, absolutely. Thank you they're showing so much. Me, they're showing me what they show me when they're really, really happy for somebody, and that's a sea of people in white robes standing up and applauding. <laughs> so take, take Yay. that with you, baby. Yes, all right. absolutely. And happy moving. Happy moving. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. All righty, we're going to Miss Rita in Florida. You're on. Hi. Hi, Rita. How are you today? I'm going to shut my really car off. Good. Oh, it's been a really long time since I've called in. I uh, I listen to it every week, but and it's right on. Every time, it's right on with <laughs> my life. And, and this time, the same thing. Um, because some of the things that you said pretty much answered my question, and I'm going to listen to it again for sure. But um, I guess I'm just going to ask it anyways because there's a yeah. piece missing. There's a piece missing that I need to figure out. I have been, I have been on this journey for a very long time. I'm, I'm like, I'm 46 years old, and I've been on this journey since I was in my late 20s, and. Um, and I have been in every single relationship I have been in has not believed in their own power at all. Like, just deny it, deny it, deny it. And they want me to deny it. Okay, and Rita, I, Rita, Rita, <laughs> Rita, yeah, Rita yes, stop. Yes. Okay. I'm stopping. So we, I'm listening. We attract, we attract the people that mm-hmm. mirror the very thing that we need to address so why, why my question is do you keep attracting people that don't believe that don't want to believe that and want to question you about it so that tells me that there's a part of you that is still questioning it also and I'm going to your little girl I tell all of you you want to find out what's running you go to your little girl or boy so, okay. uh, what religion were you raised? Oh, Christian. Okay. Presbyterian. Presbyterian. Okay. Um, not particularly, hold on, what? No, I wasn't just, I grew up in a town of 780 people and 10 churches, and I went to church almost every single day because that was our social life. That was our yeah. social life. So I went to all the different churches. I didn't just go to Presbyterian. I went to Lutheran. I went to Christ. You know, I went to all of them. Okay. And, and it there's was not one of me. them. There is not one of them that taught you you were God. No, absolutely not. They they scared the living crap out of me. Well, us. okay. Oh, so you've got to work with your little girl because your okay. adult self knows this. But that yeah, core of that core of you that was taught so early in your life, you know, our brains are done around that stuff by the time we're four or five years old. Yeah. So you have to teach your brain to look for people who know their own self empowerment as their own creators. You've got to re 
teach your brain that because your little girl ha in your adult self has been looking out into the world going, well, I can't see any of those people. I can't see any of those people. I won't have any social life. I won't be loved. People won't understand yep. me because yep. I know that from my childhood. So yes. that, and that's, that's exactly what's happened in my life. I am well, so alone. And okay, my journey. So you, you know you're your own creator, right, honey? Yes, yes. So I do. you know I really you're do. the only person that can turn this around, Rita. Okay. Okay, so how do we do that? You tell me. I go to my art space and I say, I am the creator of my life and I see people who are creators of their life and I I have friends. I have friends that love me for who I am. I have people in my life who love me for who I am. Okay, yes. And then the channel, you want to feel the joy around that. I'm not feeling right, it right now. Well, I'm no, because I'm scared to death. Scared, yeah, I'm scared, <laughs> But if you can get through this fear of this need for redemption around this, you're going to be free. Also, the channel wants to say to you, you have to go places where people believe this. I don't so, know where that is. Well, are you attending church right now? No. Okay. Why no, I'm not. Look, I want you to search out a Science of Mind church. I used to be a part of that, and there's nothing around here where I live. There isn't any. Well, no, that is not true. There is one, and there is one. It's about uh -huh. an hour away. There is. Well, it's worth it. There is. It's, and I just met someone it. who just, I just met someone, my, my, my health insurance agent told me that she goes to it. Ah, so I did see, just your meet first someone. Response, your first response, I want to teach everybody here. You see, so she, she knew before she called that she wanted to meet more people like this. And yeah. yet... Her brain was so closed down about it because of this fear from her childhood that even when somebody told her about it, she didn't remember it was there, or she no. negated it, or she. Well, because the relationship on it. I'm in, I don't feel like she would go with me or allow me to go, and. Whoa, I can't whoa, leave stop, the relationship. Stop, I can't stop. leave the relationship. Okay. Well, then you've got to, you see, that's what the I'm statement stuck. is. When, my, when I value myself, I let other people abandon me. I know. Why, yeah. why would you choose to be in a relationship with someone telling you what you can or can't do in order for your own happiness? I don't want to, I, I've been battling this for a while. I've been trying to change the way that things are. I've been doing the hope and hope and hope thing. Nope. I've been everything. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I get a no because you haven't committed to you. You haven't committed to your own beauty and your own happiness. And for somebody to say to me, what you just said to me was, my husband is abusing me, but I can't leave. I know. He won't let, he won't let me. And I'm saying, guys, that is an oxymoron to the statement, I am my own creator. I know. Well, I know. you know, but you don't know, honey. I you don't. don't know. I do, if and I not, don't know. If you're not I'm ready to feel take stuck. action. I am ready to take action, but, but no, she's you're not. sick. No, she you're not. She's ill. How do I? I feel well, guilty. This, this feel is a guilty. whole private session that I can't okay. do. Okay. Can't All take. Right. But you, and I say this every show, you guys sit down and write out what you need. This is what I need. This is what I want to empower myself 
and be in love and serve myself. This is what I need to do for me. How can I take action here through love? Start there, and then we'll move forward. But everybody's got to start there. Thank you, darling. Thank you. You bet. You got, you know, guys, I don't care if somebody's sick at home. What does that have to do with you taking three hours of your life and going to a place that serves you, that feeds you, that strengthens you, that empowers you, and then come back home, you're going to be able to serve in a much higher way. Don't you understand? Okay, we're going to Vicki in South Carolina. Hi, you're on, honey. Hi, Dee. Thanks for taking my call. Um, my mom died in 1992, and I've been wanting to communicate with her. So when I meditate, I ask her to come, and I can see her or feel her off in the distance, but I can't let her come close. What are, what's holding me back? What's my fear? Um, I guess that's not the right question. Um. When I say that you've invited her to come closer, I get a no. So have you actually invited her to come and be close with you? No, because I, I tried, but I think I'm too, I can't get myself to do it. I don't know why. I must be afraid. Um, well... Yeah, and they're showing me the movie Ghost. <laughs> so, yeah. Let's go back to the last webinar. No, it was the two webinars ago when the channel said, "Look, you guys have it all wrong. You don't live in a house with separate rooms and doors you can close. We're all hanging out in a big loft. Some of you have a body, some of you don't. So, you know." <laughs> What the channel is saying, Vicki, is you don't really even have to invite them in because they're already there. They're already right next to you. You have to just open yourself no. mm. to, commu to the communication. Now, uh, they're taking me to a core belief. Hold on a minute. Um, well, the core belief, as, as it's written, is I don't think I have enough energy to do this. But energy is not the right word. It's <laughs> that's the highest word. I don't think I have enough guts to do this. So All right, why, do you, why do you need guts to connect with love? Because when somebody's crossed over, they're just into the energy of love, guys. Mm -hmm. So if you look at it from the point of view of just wanting to connect with love, you can bring anybody in. So can you feel the difference between that and what you've been doing? Oh, yes, I can. Very much. Okay. Okay. So just say I would, like if I were talking to my late husband, I would love to connect with the love of Chris. See, I'm... Instantaneously, and instantaneously, I'm connected. So I would start there because you need to remind your brain that you're not calling in something you don't know, something that might be dangerous, an energy that's foreign to you. You're calling in the love of the person you want to connect with. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll try that. Thank you. You bet. All righty. What an interesting show this is. Eileen in Brooklyn, you're on. Hi, Dee. Hi, sweetheart. It's so good to talk to you, and, and it's, it boggles my mind sometimes how connected all of this is. You know, every show, you know, people, I know. Um, there's a thread we say that and, um, every 
Yeah. So what I'm experiencing now has to do with um, people from my past coming back. And Okay. And um and and it's helping me to to really understand where I was and where I am now. And maybe having a different perspective about where I was. Yes, in a positive way that Sam would say. Is that I'm not, I'm, in a positive way? Yeah, very positive. Um, yeah. You know, a, a former student, um, I don't know if I ever mentioned this on one of the other calls, but a former student was looking for me for like three years and it was on Messenger, and I didn't know how to use Messenger. So when I finally figured out that that there were messages there, it had been three years, and I made contact with him, and he and his brother um, studied with me back in the 80s. And it was, it was amazing. And I'm still in contact with him. Um, he's in Florida. And... It helped me so much to understand that maybe I already have had an impact. You you had an impact by being born. Can can all of you hear that? We have an impact in this world just by choosing to come into it. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. guys. Uh, again, can we just start looking at how amazing we are and how beautiful we are and you know, there was a little lady on my block growing up, Maud. Her name was Maud. And I used to call her Aunt Maud. And she was a housewife and really had no profession or anything. But her entire lifetime was spent loving the kids in the neighborhood, making cookies for the kids in the neighborhood. Uh, we always knew we could go down there if there was a problem or if we just needed some love or wanted to hang out. You see, she didn't do anything amazingly important in this world, but she did the most important thing by, by offering love to any of those kids that wanted it. Start yeah. realizing how awesome you are and, and the potential of love that you've brought into this world. It's the biggest thing you can do for your health, your money, and everything else, guys. So good for you, Eileen. I'm happy for you. It's changing everything. It's amazing. Yeah, it changes your whole perspective of you and everything else. And what's weird is that you've been this person all along and you didn't know it. Right? I know. Right. How cool is that? Thank you, darling. Thank you. Well, you guys, we've got a lot of disturbance on the calls. Do your best to get someplace quiet when you call in. Well, I can't seem to get her off. Let me see if I can get Shelly on. Shelly? Boy, it's just... Hi, D. Hi, sweetheart. There you are. Thank you. Thank you for What's taking that? my call. Wow. You're welcome. <laughs> So my question has to do with, um, I'd like to know what the channel, what insight the channel has regarding a new product and business opportunity that I've become involved with, um, that I'm extremely passionate about, and what is the best way energetically to share this with people? Okay, there's a fear you have that there's two things they want to give you, Uh, sheets. But give me a song, please. Any song that pops in. Uh, up, up, and away. Okay. <laughs> You're afraid of this taking off. Oh, my God. And now, now, why would you be afraid of having too much success? I'm, oh. I'm going to your dad and your mom, but more towards your dad. What's the fear of success? there. Wow. That's, I don't get it because he's, 
he's been very successful. Sold his business young, um, was able to retire in his 50s. Um, okay, and what did little Catherine have to give up for that? Uh, I don't know. <clears throat> okay, they're taking me to the sheets now to a core belief this page to... Hold on. I don't know what I want, so I give up trying. Okay. Uh, that, that sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah. So you want this. You want this to be a success, and you don't want it to. What's the part of you that is afraid and is holding back? Because that's your gift to freedom, and it's tied into your dad's success. Hmm. Back to the sheep. The sheep. Uh, maybe it's it's deserving. Um, I get a yes on that. Why would that affect? Well, do you know that he doesn't feel that he deserves it, really? Oh my God! Uh, yes, we've had conversations recently with with him telling me okay. how. Yeah. Okay. So what that says to the little girl in us, when we witness that, even though we can't put it into words, we get the energy. And what we say is, oh, if I'm going to love myself and be successful, I have to believe that I don't deserve it so I can get it anyway. Oh, boy. Yeah. I know this one so well. So <laughs> that's the part that you have to turn around now and go, I do deserve this. I deserve to be happy. I deserve this success. I deserve to fly. I deserve to have it easy, just like my dad did. I deserve it all. And I'm going to feel good about it. I, you know, I'm going to come through for myself here so everybody else can come through for me. Uh, awesome. Yep, that's I'm, the whole I'm, thing wrapped up in a nice little bow. So anytime <laughs> you feel yourself pulling back, you just stop yourself and go, Shelly, stop it. You know you deserve this. You know you love this. You know you're excited about this. Let's go. Awesome. You got to catch yourself in that moment, okay? Okay. All right. Darling. Thank you Thank so you. much. You bet. Mm -hmm. Guys, again, if you can, if you can always become objective, when you feel that first feeling, you become objective and talk to yourself in third person and start laughing and take an action, you will move through. But don't stop and masturbate over why you can't, because that's just going to hold you in the same pattern. All right, Lynn in Los Angeles, hi, you're on. Hi. Oh, my gosh. I love this show. <laughs> How are you? I'm good, baby. How are you? Um, okay. So last time we talked, I um, was on a long detail, and I wasn't getting paid, they said, until the end of it. So I talked to the guy, and we worked it out, and I removed myself from it on good terms, but I just needed you know, what I needed. Yeah. So I came through my, for myself on that. Thank you for the help on that. It was awesome. Like about a week later, I got cast or I got asked to read for a lead in a play. It sounded amazing and whatever. And it was last minute, but I got, I spent a full day getting, you know, memorizing everything, whatever. I was ready to go. And the day to go in for producers, they let me know that the financing had not come through and they're going to postpone it. They'll let me know. So then I got okay. another detail. Jesus. And, oh, okay. You know, Lynn, the yeah. highest word is completion. <laughs> Nothing Thank in you. your life is getting completed. And now I'm hired to host a show that I had, I had, they had filmed a couple of years ago. And then the producer said, hey, we do want you to, you knew this. You, I said no to it, but we do want you to host it. I'm going to come out there and blah, blah, blah. And, and then he added on all these like these musicians that have car collections and things like that. I talked to him yesterday and he said, you know, yeah, I don't, you know, like he wasn't planning on having me for that shoot. And then 
you know, yeah, I'm going to film it and stuff just so I have something to sell and whatever. And it just, it's not turning out. I want to do okay, creative Lynn, stuff. Lynn, yeah, Lynn, yeah. Okay, they're taking me. Boy, I don't go to this court belief very <sighs> often. I believe, I believe, I can't be free. I believe wow. I can't be free, and and you can't really be free ever if you're caught in the pattern of non-completion, <sighs> right? You have to. Right. I I can't create a part until I complete the contract and am hired, right? We right. can't even yes. complete going to the bathroom until we make a contract with ourselves that we're going to go sit on a, you know, porcelain throne. So, um, you have to start feeling into completion. And really, they hardly ever give me this either, but they're saying, can you get mad as hell towards yourself and not take this anymore? I've been like that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. And, but I don't I, know what to do with that. Like, I, I, I feel it and I, I start thinking, okay, where am I not? And I even went to Abraham Hicks, and I was called up. I was the second person. I knew I would get up there, and I said how much I wanted my own team and my own stuff to create my own stuff and not just be working for other people and their teams. And she's like, well, you have to appreciate the team you're on until you can – okay. So I'm like, okay. So I've been trying to appreciate and, and accept where I'm at and then know what I want and write that out. But here's what keeps coming to my head in the last, like, five minutes. You know, okay, Frank died years ago, like seven years ago. He was cremated, and I still have never done anything with his ashes. It's like I haven't been able to get myself to go yeah. up to Ojai and you put them there. Like, it. Exactly. You have completed it. Exactly. have not completed it, Lynn. It's an example. Yeah. So, yes, for you, in the scheme of the world, does it matter? Not at all. <laughs> right. But for right. you, you need to complete that. Because you have a belief that you need to complete that in order okay. to move on. So you, you should do that ASAP. But more than that, you have to know that you're free in your own creation. That I believe that in my creation, in the creation of who I am, I am free to complete everything I want to complete that the whole universe <sighs> is conspiring to complete this. You know, I work with actors all the time and they go, I, you know, D I'm just not booking. I'm not booking. I'm not booking. Well, they're not booking because all they want to do is book. They don't want to do the job. <laughs> wow. Right? Yeah. So, right. you know, Lynn, you just wanted to get a job, but but you're going, oh, I'm so lucky to get the job. It doesn't matter if I get the job I want. It doesn't matter if you pay me. It doesn't matter if you honor me. I just really need to just get the job. But that's not what you want. No, You want the not. job that you want on your terms, right, with the pay mm -hmm. that you deserve. Don't be afraid to ask for it all. You've got to ask to receive, guys. You've got to ask to receive. Now, I have felt like I have been doing that, writing every day about everything that I want and, and uh, you know, fulfillment in my life. And, and, and actually, I mean, I get specific and sometimes I get very general in doing it because I'm, I'm not quite sure which <laughs> – it's like how I feel at the moment, how, how specific I'm going to get. So is it this completion thing that's been holding it back? Because I feel like I've been writing out it's and talking belief, about what I want. The belief that you can't be free does not okay. allow you to move into the full feeling of already having it. And again, okay. Okay. it's the feeling more than the writing, more than the speaking, more than the thinking. It's the feeling. Right. That makes sense. Okay. Love awesome. completion. Anything you want to create in your life, more of, love it more. Okay? Thank you, sweetheart. Okay. Thank you. Love you. I love you, too. I love all of you, but you know that. Miss Catherine in 
New Jersey. You're on. Yes. Hi, Jean. Hi. Hi. Um, <clears throat> I have, um, well, everything on this call has been like hitting me. And it was interesting when Shelly was on and, you were talk- and she was talking about afraid of too much success and all that jazz. All of a sudden you said, what did little Catherine have to give up for that? I'm like, oh, that's me. <laughs> and um, but um, most most currently is for the past week. I guess I've been having some IBS issues, irritable bowel, and I thought uh-huh. it was food that set it off, some nuts or something. And it was now I think it's more emotional for sure because of all the stress uh, and all the things you touched on about the weather Actually, and all that jazz that helped to clear. Uh, Catherine, they're saying it's spiritual. She, okay. Uh, on. Give me a movie, please. Um, I, I flashed and then I went to the way we were. I don't know. Okay. Well, they want to go to the way we were. And Ghost really moves into that because... A lot of the things that we're dealing with, guys, are ghosts of our past. And the way we were is about two people who loved each other entirely and incredibly, but they had to finally own up to the truthfulness of who each of them were individually in a political way. And it became very clear that they had to follow what was best for them, like going to the church an hour away, right? right? Mm -hmm. So that's, I'm not a doctor, but energetically and spiritually, that's what I'm getting your uh, IBS is about, is you being torn about fighting the part of you that wants to celebrate yourself and know that you are your own creator with the part of you that says, no, you better hold yourself back. Mm. Now that would make anybody irritable. (laughs) You see, you're trying trying to get rid of all of that shit. Mm -hmm. And part of you, because you're in fear of not being a good little girl, is holding on to it. Okay. So I would give myself permission to let go of all the old shit that wants to be released, all the programs and belief systems that are not serving you anymore, right? So that you can have free, creative energy. Yes. All right. I, I want you to start there and... You know, if you have a physical uh, challenge, you should see a doctor if you are so called to do so. Okay, Catherine? Thank you very much. You bet. Thank you. All righty. Boy, we we are going to make this, I think. All right. Alberta in Canada, you're my last call, I think, but we'll see. Hi, Nikki. How are you? Hello. I'm good, darling. What can I do for you? Um, I'll make it quick. Um, when I did order for your private reading, for, and I know I put my email, I only have one email, but I, it took a week for me to get the confirmation order. And what happened, we finally figured out, was on the email, my date husband's name went, and the emails were all going out to someone by that same name. Mm-hmm. So my question is, I hope this person doesn't call you for a private reading because I kept sending emails to see if everything was okay. Okay. Um, Uh, My question is, um, is there a website where I can make sure that that my email is correct with you? And because I haven't been getting that many and to make sure that you're still on the e-blast because I only uh, have one email, except my emails are going out to this person. Who, who's getting confirmation. Okay, all right, I got it. I got it, Alberta. I got it. Okay. So I believe you're in conversation with Ashley already about this, are you not? Yeah, I was actually. And I sent another email today to make sure. Yeah. To make sure. Yeah. Yeah, well, I have been. And, know, and it took about a week because what happened, the emails were going to okay, the person. I understand. I understand. Yeah, okay. I understand. But we're in the process of getting this worked out 
for you. Of course, Ashley doesn't work after 3 o'clock on Fridays, guys. So any oh, okay. correspondence that comes in over the weekend is not addressed unless I can do it, and I cannot do this one, not addressed until Monday when she comes back in. So we're on it. But what they want to say to you that the energetic cause around all this is that you are confused about who you are. That you need to be very clear about, well, it starts with choosing. I choose. To be very clear about who I am. And, you know, just take a week, Alberta, every day in the morning before you get get out of bed in this day-to-day. I choose to be very clear about who I am. I am the creator of me. And communication is open and clear and direct with me because I know who I am. So start playing with that, and you're going to see your experience in the world shift around quite considerably. Okay? Okay. And please thank Ashley for for everything she has done, Um, because we have been working on it. And and it took us a while, but we figured out that, oh, I obviously typed in that name for the email and not mine. But it turned out it was my late husband's name that went on the email. But, okay, well, but, good. We're, we are it's handling weird. it, and I promise yep. you, well, okay. this is how confusion in your energy shows up as confusion in your life, guys. Okay. And when you're starting to have a lot of confusing things happening, you better stop, get objective, and go, okay, this is not how my life goes or how I want it to go. I'm clear about who I am. I'm clear I'm the creator. And I'm directing ease and joy and clear communication everywhere in my life. All right, baby? Thanks, Sue. You bet. You bet. Bye. That was a great message to all of us because, you know, we're being challenged a lot and things happen and we can get switched and go into reaction and that's when... Things start getting kind of namby-pamby out there, and you got to stop, be objective, move into your direction and your power again, and take charge of your life. All righty. So, um, iHeartRadio, we're on that now. You can find us there, too. We're just all over the place, guys. And the next webinar, October 18th, that's a Wednesday from 7 to 9 on Sphere. So expect fear to be coming into the show because you know the channel starts right away. And if you're interested in a $100 30-minute private, I don't offer them very often, but they're up right now. I think you um, you have to sign up for the e-blast. If there will be a link on the e-blast tomorrow um, that comes out. All right. What a show again. I love you all until we meet again. You love you and love yourselves and love yourselves even more and just 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 put your hands all over yourself and pat yourself on the back and look in the mirror and go, I love you, stuff. Until we meet again, love yourselves more because, you know, that's what it's all about. Thanks for joining Dee on Conscious Creation. Visit her website at imdwallace.com for awesome downloads, archived shows, enlightening webinars, and amazing free offerings. And remember, you can hear Dee every week on BBS Radio, iTunes, the Empowerment Channel at the Connect Me Radio Network. You can also hear Dee on Get Inspired Media Network, Transformation Talk Radio, UBN Universal Broadcasting Network, plus News for the Soul Broadcasting. Be sure to join us next week for Conscious Creation with D. Wallace. And remember, loving yourself is the key to creation.